So in this video we want to look at double integrals in polar coordinates. Now the first thing I want to do is actually look at a very simple example of an integral that has very little to do with polar coordinates and that's this one, the integral of x times the square root of 1 plus x squared. Now the question is what do we do here? The typical thing that we would do is we would set u equal to 1 plus x squared. But then you have to get rid of this dx so what do you do? You write du is 2x dx and so in particular you have that du dx is 2x. Why is that here? It's because when we change the variables the area gets distorted in a particular way and it gets distorted by exactly this factor. So this is the distortion factor. It's not a technical term, that's just the way to think about it. So now, this is something that a lot of students get confused about when we convert to polar coordinates because the distortion factor appears when we, when we do these double integrals, but it's not exactly clear why they're occurring. So, uh, in what follows, bear this example in mind. And we'll discuss what the higher dimensional version of this is. So let's actually now discuss polar coordinates. So polar coordinates are useful when you're integrating uh, a rather circular region. So what we're going to do is set x equal to r cos theta, where r is the radius of the region and theta is the angle, and set y to be r sine theta. Then what we want to do is compute the volume element dx dy. This is what we usually call dA. Now I claim that dA is r dr d theta and students are always concerned why there's an r here and this is the distortion factor that uh, we, discuss, we discussed before. So let's see why this distortion factor occurs. So in higher dimensions uh, we need to figure out what the derivative is because you, you haven't got one variable, you have two variables. And so um, what we have is that dx really can be thought of as d, dx on dr when we change variables and dx on d theta. And then this dy gives us the same thing. We're changing y with respect to r and y with respect to theta. So the way you calculate this distortion factor, I mean you want a scalar, the distortion factor is given by the determinant of this matrix. So dx on dr, dx on d theta, dy dr, dy, d theta. And this of course makes sense because um, you can think of this as an infinitesimal parallelogram and the distortion factor should give you the area of this infinitesimal parallelogram and that's exactly what determinants do. So let's calculate this. If I know that x is r cos theta then dx on dr is just cos theta and I know that dx on d theta is minus r of sine theta. Similarly, if uh, y is r sine theta, I have dy on dr is sine theta and dy d theta is r cos theta. So if we put this into this matrix, what do we get? I get dx dr is cos theta, so I need to calculate the determinant of cos theta. dx d theta is minus r sine theta. dy dr becomes sine theta, and dy d theta becomes r cos theta. If we calculate this determinant, I get r cos squared theta minus r sine squared theta. 
this is just r uh, plus cos plus sine squared theta. Sorry, uh, this becomes r cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, and by the Pythagorean identity, that's just r. So that's why the r appears when we uh, change variables. It's exactly this distortion factor given by the determinant of this infinitesimal parallelogram. Now the technical word for this is Jacobian. That's what this matrix is called. Okay, so let's apply that to this particular example. So we want to evaluate the integral of 3x plus 4y squared dA where d is the region bounded by the circles x squared plus y squared equals 1 and x squared plus y squared equals 4 in the upper half plane. So remember, as always, we sketch the region of integration to begin with. So let's do that. Uh, I'll change color maybe. And we're going to have two circles. So I'll draw one circle of radius 1 which maybe will look something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we have another circle of radius 2. So we have something like this. It's going to bug me if they're not perfect, but that's okay. So we have something like this. And we're in the upper half plane, so we're only really looking at this region here. So. So we want to switch the coordinates to polar coordinates because we're in a rather circular region. Notice that the radius is bounded between 1 and 2 and the angle is bounded between 0 and pi. So when we evaluate this integral, what we'll have is the integral from 0 to pi, the integral from 1 to 2, of 3 r cos theta plus 4 r sine theta squared and then r dr d theta. So now we just have to evaluate this integral. So let's simplify it maybe a little bit. I'll get 3r squared cos theta plus 4r, there's an r squared here, so we'll have an r cubed sine squared theta dr d theta. We evaluate the integral with respect to r. What we get is r cubed on 3, so this becomes just r cubed cos theta plus r to the 4 on 4, so we get r to the 4 sine squared theta. It's evaluated from 1 to 2. So maybe I'll change color to make it a bit clearer. So we have, th there should still be a d theta here. So we'll have the integral from 0 to pi. I'll put the 2 in. I'll get 8 cos theta plus 2 to the 4 is 16 sine squared theta and then we'll subtract um, cos theta and subtract sine squared theta. Simplify this a little further what we'll have is the integral from 0 to pi of 7 cos theta and then 15 sine squared theta d theta. Let's, the first integral is quite simple. We have the integral of cos being sine. So we have that. And then plus 15 integral 0 to pi of sine squared theta d theta. So this is exactly 0 plus 15 integral 
0 to pi of sine squared theta d theta. Now to integrate sine squared theta, we need the double angle formula that says that uh, cos 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So what that tells us is that 2 sine squared theta is uh, 1 minus cos 2 theta. And in particular, sine squared theta is 1 half 1 minus cos 2 theta. So plug in this double angle formula in here. We end up with 15 let's say over 2, integral 0 to pi of 1 minus cos 2 theta d theta. What we'll end up with now is 15 on 2 out the front. I'll end up with a theta here. The integral of cos 2 theta is 1 on 2 sine 2 theta from 0 to pi and plugging this in I get 15 over 2 pi minus 1 half sine 2 pi and then if you put 0 in you'll get 0 for both of those terms so we end up with 15 pi on 2 uh, and that's all because this term is also 0 Hopefully no computation error was made there, but I think that looks fine. Okay, let's look at the next example. Find the volume of the solid bounded by the plane z equals 0 and z equals 1 minus x squared minus y squared. So let's just get a brief sketch of this region. So what we're looking at here is we have a plane z equals 0, that's this plane here, and then 1 minus x squared minus y squared is like a parabol parabol parabolic region, yeah, paraboloid, um, like this. So what we see is that we're going all the way around, so theta is bounded between 0 and 2 pi, but this radius, which is maximal here, is 1 at the bottom and 0 at the top. So what we have is the integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral 0 to 1, then 1 minus x squared minus y squared becomes 1 minus r cos theta squared minus r sine theta squared and then r d r d theta so let's evaluate this what I end up with is 0 to 2 pi let's just simplify this I'll, I'll get uh, 0 to 1 then 1 minus r squared cos squared theta minus r squared sine squared theta r d r d theta but then this term here is just r squared so what I have is the integral from 0 to 2 pi integral 0 to 1 1 minus r squared r d r d theta since this has no theta term we just have uh, you can view it as a constant with respect to theta, so I get 2 pi minus 0 times the integral of 0 to 1 r minus r cubed dr. So I have 2 pi times, well if I evaluate this integral I'll get r squared over 2 minus r to the 4 over 4 from 0 to 1. And so if I put 1 in, I don't have to put 0 in because I'll just get 0. I have 1 over 2 minus 1 over 4. So I have 2 pi 
multiplied by 1 over 4 and that gives me pi over 2 and that's it for this for these examples so let's just briefly review the main points so remember that whenever we change variables we have a distortion factor that you have to worry about it's not clear that it's given by the determinant of a matrix um, in the one-dimensional case because I mean the determinant of a one by one matrix doesn't really need any matrix theory uh, but in higher dimensions when we're taking two variables to another pair of variables uh, we need to look at the determinant of this matrix here um, which we call the Jacobian in the case of polar coordinates this distortion factor is given exactly by R and so dA becomes R dR d theta the use of polar coordinates is particularly handy when we look at um, circular regions such as the regions bounded between two circles like annuli um, or paraboloids and whatnot and we saw two examples of regions that can be considered using polar coordinates um, if you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff um, check the summary notes for math 2021 I have these examples written out there okay thanks guys I'll see you in the next video